Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Amen. Well, as we come to our last week in this Advent game planning theme and we read the last section of Romans, the close, it makes sense that Paul is kind of trying to amp up the team or the people who are reading this letter to follow out, to carry out what he's described to them. He's it's, about, it's like uh, the game is about to start, and he doesn't introduce new material. He simply tries to point them back to what they've been talking about. And again, that's kind of our focus on today. Because the get best game plan in the world, right, won't do you a lick of good if you don't actually carry it out. In sports, this is sometimes referred to as executing the game plan. Anyone, right, can do the right technique when the coach is sitting there right on top of you and you're doing a one-on-one drill. Well, then it's easy. You know you have to, and the coach will keep talking to you about it if you don't do it. But it's a different thing when you're in the middle of a game and you're tired or you faced some setbacks. It takes more determination, more grit to carry out what you've been taught. Today, uh, we are focusing on carrying out God's plan as we've already learned it. Now, it, it doesn't matter what you, it doesn't matter if you know how to play, right? That's kind of a nice thing. It may be necessary. But it doesn't matter if you know how to play if you don't actually play that way. Uh, it's not enough to know that you should repent and pray and do good to others and be patient. What actually matters is, are you actually going to pray? Are you going to repent? Are you going to do good to others and practice patience. A coach never stops harping on the fundamentals. You might say over and over, probably every practice, I say, you got to keep, I tell somebody, you got to keep, you got to use your hands. They don't do you any good down here when you're on defense. Keep your hands up, block out. You know, those the same things, you, you harp on them continually. Um, you always have to be talking about the fundamentals when you're coaching. Now, that doesn't mean you only talk about the fundamentals, uh, but you have to get the foundation right before you can build on it. Um, and so, too, with church, all the good planning, all the committees, all the fancy church plans in the world won't do us any good if we're not rejoicing, repenting, believing, praying, and doing good to others. Those things only help if you're already doing the fundamentals. Now, when you have a team, you have a game plan going into the game, typically. However, once you start the game, the other team shows up, right? And they don't just let you do whatever you want. They're the opposition. They don't cooperate. They try to disrupt your game plan. And so you have to expect and overcome opposition, right? That's why you do all the game planning. It's why you put all the work in, because you know that that opposition is going to come. Um, When the other team shows up, it's it's easy not to execute, uh, but if you, have a, if you have a good game plan, and that's kind of pivotal, if your game plan stinks, well, you might have to abandon it. But if you have a good game plan, then the best thing you can do is stick with it. Opposition and setbacks don't mean a, a game plan is worthless, necessarily. A good game plan helps you overcome challenges and challengers. In Romans chapter 16, Paul talks a bit about some of the challenges that his readers are going to face. And he talks first about identifying them and then defeating them. It's, it's easy, pretty easy to identify your opponent when you're playing in a, a game and they're wearing a different jersey than you are. However, in our spiritual life, it's a bit trickier. Some people think politicians or Um, are the enemy, or Muslims are the enemy, or anyone who's different is the enemy, but we know that God came to redeem all people. Now, admittedly, people can dig their heels in and make themselves an enemy, but it's not, no people group is an enemy of God's church. Um, And even when people do kind of dig their heels in and say, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to oppose God's plan, but even then, they're really just pawns of the evil one. One of our real enemies is the dark spiritual forces of this evil world, or, you know, the devil. Another enemy Paul identifies, which we might not think about, but are good to be wary of, 
are smooth talkers who trade, basically, here's the, what makes them bad. They trade the message of Christ crucified and resurrected for something else. Uh, the biggest enemies are not the obvious ones sometimes, but in church it's sometimes the wolves in sheep's clothing. Uh, usually these kinds of people, they sound spiritual, they know the jargon, but bottom line is they're out to make a buck or get power or take advantage of people one way or another. Now, uh, another enemy today uh, is COVID-19. Now, this isn't like a clear-cut spiritual enemy, but I think making sure we identify the enemy should help us. Uh, because like anything else, it's easy to, to get distracted, just like in the spiritual world to, think, world, to think our enemy is a person or people. But we have to remember the enemy is the disease. And, and not only the disease, right, but um, uh, the social isolation and the uh, education and work curveballs and the added stress that everybody, those are the kinds of things we're all facing, no matter what, you know, no matter what we feel about it, we all face those obstacles. Now, this is something that probably every team, but the teams I have coached here at Grace, I've always had to talk about, and sometimes we've had more success than others. I say, we've got, I've had several big speeches before, and who knows if they're listening, sometimes maybe. Um, but I said, look, we have got all the talent that we need. We are skilled enough. We are good enough. We can shoot. We can dribble. We can pass. We can do all those things. But if we keep fighting each other, we're never going to make it anywhere. If we're, if we're killing each other, we're, we're never going to be any, a team of any value, right? Um, it's, it's easier for me as a coach and not a player to see that that's a challenge um, that we have. But the same thing could be said about our, our families or our friendships or, or our church, for that matter. Um, we... the. We have all the tools that we need, Paul might tell us, to persevere. Uh, but if we're fighting each other, it won't do us a lot of good. Now, to be clear, I'm, I'm sure I'm not aware of anything, but I think at church we've done a pretty good job, probably not perfect. Um, but I think that this year, as we think about executing the game plan, think about the holidays as, as your game plan, because this year the holidays are different, right? Um, and probably not the same for all of us in, in a wide variety of ranges, uh, but the holidays are going to be a bit more of a challenge. So I put it before you, think of the holidays as where we execute the game plan that God has already given us, not teaching anything new, um, but to put into practice the same things God has already taught us. Uh, and one thing is, please, please, whatever you do, even when and, and we, we we can and probably will disagree with family and friends, but even when you are disagreeing with family and friends, please remember that they are your family and that they are your friends, right? Um, it's easy, especially, yeah, it, it, we, we need to keep track of that. Now, oftentimes, um, when, in a game, when things start going wrong, and in most games, things eventually, even the best of teams, have things that don't go the way they want them to. Uh, but it's a temptation to start panicking when one thing goes wrong or multiple things go wrong. Players think, well, this isn't working, so I got to do something else. I got to, and usually they revert to what they're used to doing. In basketball, it's like, if this isn't working, well, I just got to go back to doing what, what I'm used to doing, which is just shooting, you know, get, taking a shot. I got to take things, get things under control myself. Um, but when what really needs to happen when things start going sideways, is you have to stay in control of yourself and return to the fundamentals. It's oftentimes, it's the simple but important things, doing the simple things over and over again that will get you back in a basketball game. I mean, that's, a, that's totally true. You, sometimes you, you just have to do, you just have to get back on defense. You have to take a good shot. You got to pass. You got to, you know, it's all the basic things. And if you do those, it's not some crazy thing that you got to do to win the game you got to do the little things over and over again. Uh, well, the same, the same is true in our, in our spiritual walk, too. Just because things start going sideways doesn't mean we need to abandon ship. Um, it, again, it all depends on whether we have a good game plan, and I think we do in, our, in the scriptures. As things get hard, don't panic. 
don't fall for the attractive but ultimately empty spiritual traps out there. Don't give in to despair and don't give in to rage. Rather, lean on the Lord and execute the plan he's already given us. If you don't know what else to do, just get back to the fundamentals. Um, that the same things we've talked about. Pray, rejoice, give thanks, be patient, and encourage one another. Again, I think that if we want to think about a game day, this holiday, to me, I'm thinking it's holiday break because my kids just started holiday break, you know, on, on Friday. So maybe for some of you, it's a different time frame. But the holidays, this holiday season is a chance for us to put into practice these things. Pray, rejoice, give thanks, be patient and encourage one another. I mean, those things may be a little bit more of a challenge this year. Maybe not. I hope they're not. But if they are, that doesn't mean that we should throw in the towel or give up on the game plan God has given us. They may not be the first things we feel like doing, but they're exactly what we need to do to move forward when we fall behind on the scoreboard or when things aren't going well. And um, I, if you've got, maybe if you don't, this doesn't apply to you, but if you've got extra time this holiday season, an idea would be to take advantage of it by making an extra phone call this week. Now, I imagine that our world right now, maybe some of your neighbors and friends or family, need some encouragement, right? Find a way to do that. If, if you've got extra time, maybe there's a way to do something, to say something or send something, a little bit of extra encouragement um, to somebody who you might not have otherwise. Obviously, I know you're going to talk to, your, to some of your family. you are probably already got that well planned out. But think about maybe there's some little extra thing you can do to encourage others because Lord knows we need it, right? Now, just because we've hit some turbulence doesn't mean we should abandon ship. No, it's the exact opposite. It's at times like this that it's most critical for us to stick to the game plan. And again, not introducing anything new. Pray, rejoice, give thanks, be patient, encourage one another. So let's go out there. And knowing that we're going to face um, some opposition, let's focus on carrying out those simple things because that's how we're going to get through it. That's how God's kingdom will advance. Uh, that's uh, exactly what our Lord is calling us to do. In Jesus' name, amen.